subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about the highlights of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. This is the RS Clips. So, you know, because again, you're a theoretical physicist, so you have to stay in your mind, you have to stay within your own creativity. I'm going to be rude with you here. Bolo. Have you felt <laughs> like even you started going mad at some point? No, I, have, I haven't ever felt that. But you've had, Personally, I haven't felt that. You had peers who feel like that? I've heard of many. I haven't personally encountered somebody who has felt this way, at least that I know of. But I've heard of many scientists who have gone through depression and mental problems and, and much more. You know, Like why? why? Why do you think that happens? I think it's because they are... Some people are naturally prone to being depressed and all. Mm. And some people, they have extremely unrealistic expectations of themselves. And when they are pursuing something with such dogged determination for so many years and you don't get it, it may cause mental problems. So there's a host of reasons. But there have been scientists who have kind of been driven mad. For example, there was this Italian physicist called Ettore Majorana who disappeared. He was doing work in uh, in the 1930s or 20s, I think, some sometime around there. He was doing wor work in particle physics. He was a very influential physicist. He did very good work. But one day he took a boat ride and disappeared, never came back. No uh -huh. one ever knows what happened to him. Maybe he was uh, fed up. Maybe, maybe he was depressed. We don't know. But no one knows until today what happened to him. So there have been many cases like this. Mm. Could you highlight like a couple of more things that people on the outside don't understand about the world of science or mathematics like this, sir? I think in some ways, scientists, especially the theoreticians, are in some way quite similar to artists. Mm. Take, the, take the example of Vincent van Gogh. Mm. He was this tortured genius. So I'm not saying that all scientists are tortured geniuses. Yeah. But this is another example that brings out the kind of mental turmoil that goes in, in the minds of extreme geniuses. Mm. Then you had John Forbes Nash. Have you seen The Beautiful mm. Mind, that movie? Yes, yes. So that is another scientist who who had who developed schizophrenia. Who developed schizophrenia? Yes, he was not born with it, but at some point in his life, maybe as a student, he started showing symptoms. So he was under the influence of schizophrenia for many years, for decades. Do you do you think it's an outcome of driving your brain in that sixth gear, seventh gear, for the sake of science that actually drives you to insanity? It may be possible for certain unbalanced people, who some people who are not able to to find some kind of balance in life. I'm not sure what exactly causes schizophrenia, but I'm sure there are certain personality types that are more prone to it. Mm. So John Nash was that, but the strange thing is that he was able to recover from it eventually. Mm. So after a certain point in his life, after a few decades, he said that whatever I am seeing, I'm going to just reject it and I'm not going to act on it. Mm. And then he was able to come back into some kind of academic life. He was even, even able to receive the Nobel Prize in economics. Mm. So there are, there are certain cases like this that are quite striking. So it is something, a parallel I see between uh, artists, very creative artists. There, is this, uh, there was this French lady called Seraphine de Saint-Ly. She was an incredible painter. Mm. She also had some mental illness. But mm. it, I get the feeling that some mental illnesses cause certain flights of imagination that would otherwise not be possible. So maybe it is something that afflicts geniuses more than others. Mm. But it is a curious phenomenon that one does see from time to time. Yeah, I don't know whether this was on your podcast or just some article I was reading. I was reading about Da Vinci. How Da Vinci is remembered as an artist, but he actually had drawn out the blueprint of a helicopter and flying devices also. So he was a scientist as much as he was an artist. And he had drawn out the exact human anatomy. You know, he has that, I forgot what it's called. Vitruvian man. Vitruvian man, yeah. Uh, where he had mapped out the human anatomy and uh, I think he had mapped out what beauty is or something, right? What was the point of Vitruvian? I think there was something about the uh, golden ratio in there, I yeah. think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, correct. Uh, what is the golden ratio? Uh, it's an aesthetic concept. It's a certain ratio of two numbers. I don't remember exactly what it is. It's called phi. Mm. And that is something you find in patterns all over nature, whether it is the spiral shape of a seashell, mm. whether it is the patterns in asparagus or broccoli or certain flowers, it's something you see over and over again. And it is it it is something that we find very aesthetic. Mm. Another example of mathematics being all around us, yeah, yeah. which is what you only understand once you go a little bit into uh, reading about science. And I also read that Da Vinci, when he died, he had a lot of incomplete projects. As in, until the point he was dying, he was still in that search for what is this art around me? What is this mathematics around me? Uh, again, probably a crazy guy, for the lack of a better word. Well, all geniuses are to some extent crazy because crazy is something that is not normal. Mm. 
Mm. And geniuses are naturally not normal. Mm. I think Da Vinci was a genuine polymath. He was great at art. He was great at science. He was great at anatomy. He did dissections. He invented or he imagined such and certain futuristic uh, instruments and uh, vehicles like helicopters and cannons and military things and all. He also wrote in a very strange way. So he had a lot of projects that were always going on until the like like you said until the time he died. Mm. And I think that's one of the uh, one of the characteristics of a genius. it's what drives you forward you, if you have a multiplicity of projects going on at the same time then you will always have some avenue in which to unleash your creativity if you get jaded with this or bored with this you pick something else up i think isaac asimov was also this sort of a person he was a science fiction writer he was also a physicist i think he wrote more books than any other human being in the in in this the amount of time he lived i think he was writing i think a book every 2 or 3 months or something mm. so his output his literary output was enormous and he said that the key to creativity is to have a number of projects going on at the same time <laughs> if you get if you get uh, writer's block on one thing leave it aside for a while start start, start something else or yeah. start working on what's incomplete over here yeah. so that is the kind of approach that certain people have and i think it's a very if you can take it if your mind can take that sort of uh, it's sort of uh, load load yeah load then it works for you mm. what's your opinion on your own state of mind sir because again you are into physics you're into mathematics you're into science also into history you're into geopolitics and you're into these concepts in a very deep way so what goes on in your head like and how do you balance things out see i'm the kind of person i'm not a multitasker there is this concept in project management management of multitasking do five things at the same time it doesn't work for me i don't think it, it works for many people yeah. i like to focus on one thing at one time i have a number of things at the back of my mind i am a very curious person i'm naturally curious i have curiosity about all kinds of things that's why i've been able to learn so much because i've been reading all my life mm. but when i'm working on one thing i can only focus on that i need to keep everything else at the back of my mind mm. or or shut it out for some time otherwise it's going to distract me yeah. but you know this is why i feel you and me can talk to each other easily there are these parallels between you and me in in some ways like multi like you know you like learning about multiple subjects like delving into different things i'm not a multitasker at all i'm not a multitasker to the degree where if i'm writing a text message to someone and if my mom and sister are talking at the back i have to ask them to just stay quiet Same. for one minute until i finish the text message like utna like i have to be in one thing completely uh but in saying that honestly i have felt my mind slipping away lately i don't know what it in is in what way it's the same thing about i mean what you said about isaac asimov that you do multiple projects at the same time this is where i feel the most fulfilled when there's multiple businesses i feel business is also a form of creativity and your own thoughts expressing themselves in the real world it is right? it is yes or your own creativity is creativity it? expressing itself as real world things which add value it's just it has that element of money and a value adds attached to it it's a way of keeping score isn't it money what do you mean i mean money the amount of money you're making out of it is it tells you whether you're going in the right direction yeah. or not and what score you've kept it's kind of keeping score yeah it's uh, as who it's uh, nawal ravi khan said this that uh, all of us throughout our lives just need to create games for ourselves and keep ourselves entertained through those games 